Hello, game developers, and welcome to yet another episode of uh, Game On. I am your host, Todd Kerpelman, and I am here today with Wolf Dobson, who is not going to be talking about physics, but is going to be talking about something uh, just as exciting, um, and that's the turn-based multiplayer features that we just released um, a few days ago. Wolf, why don't you tell us about this stuff? I'd love to. Awesome. So first question is, what is uh, turn-based multiplayer? Um, Turn-based multiplayer means a single shared state passed between multiple players. Only one player has permission to edit the shared state at a time. Once you've edited it as much as you want, you pass it on to somebody else. Uh, we support 2 to 8 players, uh, including auto-match, and you can actually mix and match your auto-match. You can have some invited players, some auto-match players. Uh, you can see uh, all of the documentation and stuff at this URL that our producer has added here. Oh, look at that. Magic of post-processing. <laughs> So who can use this? Uh, this is all part of Google Play services. So anything you want, going back to Gingerbread, um, it should be on your phone right now or a Play Store update very near you. Um, we're also uh, publishing REST bindings for web or desktop apps. But be warned, we don't really have a notification system. The notifications only appear on Android. And now, let's do a little demo. All right. So this is a game that I wrote called 8-Bit uh, Artist. And uh, it uses the multiplayer, uh, turn-based multiplayer. All right, well, I'm going to start a game here. All right. So this is, this is basically a guess what I'm drawing game. But mm -hmm. you've, you've added a fun twist to it, which is the grid is basically 10 by 10. So all of our art is equally crappy. And as a crappy artist, I appreciate being uh, put in the same level playing field as everybody else. So I'm going to start a match um, with, with this account. And it looks like I have some opponents um, that I can choose from. These are basically populated from my G plus circles. Mm -hmm. And this is using the built-in uh, invitation uh, uh, UI that we provide. Awesome. Should I invite Vic Gondrocha? I'll, you know, I'll, no. just, I'll just invite you. That's cool. All right. OK. And then on my or there you go. Now uh, you have to draw. So it's going to give you a word to draw here. Reading. Mm -hmm. mm. I don't, I, that's actually a tough one. I'm going to try and draw a book. And <laughs> that looks sort of like a heart. You know what? Because this is a demo, I'm not going to spend a lot of time making this look good. I'm just going to assume <laughs> it's a heart this bleeding. This is very clearly an <laughs> awesome picture of a book with words on it. I think I'm I mean, just going to press done for okay. you right there. There we go. Okay. <laughs> All right. So this gets sent, um, and uh, on my screen, oh, that. you that see that I got a I got a little pop up uh, that tells me uh, that the game was updated. So now I can check my available games. And sure enough, there's a, an invitation from Todd Kerbelman, so I'll accept his invitation. And then it's my turn to guess his amazing, amazing drawing. Let me see here. So basically, the state that got it's passed. It's lungs. It's lungs. It's definitely lungs. <laughs> it kind of looks like lungs. OK, but... I have a couple of choices here. I have reading victim, spring drink, super whale, heart, <laughs> lungs. <laughs> no, I, I have like that. Uh, but you know, you do happen to know that it was reading. So I'm just going to click reason. reading here. Awesome. Oh, that's correct. So I can keep going. So now, um, Maybe we, it was a coffee factory. So now when I sent you that first game, you saw that little notification um, right there on your screen because I guess you were in the middle of an 8-bit artist game. Mm -hmm. What would happen if you were like, you know, reading your Gmail or something and I sent you a game invitation? Right. If, if the game is not running, then what's going to happen is uh, you'll get a regular Android notification with the game logo at the top. Oh, okay. And, and it's going to say, hey, you've got a game. If you click on that notification, it takes you to that inbox. And you can choose to either play the game or skip it or whatever you want to do. Okay, so this is pretty pretty standard kind of notification. Mm -hmm. sort. What if I don't have the game installed? If you don't have the game installed, you'll still get the notification. Ooh. But when you try to play it, it'll take you to the Play Store. Okay. I, I guess that makes sense. You kind of need the game installed to play. Exactly. So I could really, I could, I could invite anybody, whether they have the game or not, mm -hmm. um, and uh, hopefully they will, they will see the, the notification. And I guess if I were a game developer, this might be a good way to get word out about my game because people would it. start inviting their friends to play and blah, blah, blah. If you have a good game. Uh, and I guess our recommendation here would be, unlike um, a real-time game, you know, go ahead and encourage people to invite their friends because um, you're not dependent on that other person to be on their phone at that moment with the game open, ready to play. Um, these these types of turn-based games are generally sort of assumed that it might take you know 24 hours or so for the other person to to notice that it's mm -hmm. their turn and to take their turn. Exactly. And uh, in this case, it is much more fun playing with people. You know. All right. Well, let's keep going. So, how do you set all this cool turn-basedness up? 
Um, first, you got to do all the regular Google Play services stuff. Uh, it's covered in a lot of our other videos. Um, so create an application, link an Android application to it, put that ID in your application. Um, we have lots and lots of sample code and instructions for this, and you should check it out. Is 8-Bit Artist available as a, as a sample game? Uh, it will be soon. Oh, OK. So what do people have right now to look at? Right now, they have turn-based multiplayer Skeleton, which is just like 8-Bit Artist, but we've removed all the game. So you're just passing a string back and forth to each okay. other. OK. Uh, so it's like a string that I can modify, send mm -hmm. it back. Exactly. Perfect. Um, one really important difference, though, is uh, when you go to your application in the uh, console, um, you need to flip this switch. Um, it's right there in the Game Services tab on the Play Developer Console. Um, if you don't, you'll get weird errors. So how do you invite people to a game? Um, this is our default invitation screen. You can write your own invitation screens. We have methods in the game client for that. But you're welcome to use ours. And we actually recommend it, because it's going to be familiar between applications, uh, other applications that use turn-based multiplayer. Um, and it'll stay up to date if we learn something and change it. So really, only write your own game client if, if you're if you're willing to kind of spend the time to continually update this mm -hmm. thing, and, and you're maybe a large company that's got a very strong brand that you're concerned with keeping. Exactly. If you're a three-person startup, maybe just use our, uh, mm -hmm. our UI. It'll save you lots of time in the long run. Um, putting up this, that screen we just showed is really easy. It takes this much code. Hmm. Um, just create an intent and uh, start it. Um, then you'll need a listener on the other side to check to see uh, what result you got um, and whether or not they hit cancel. That's what the check if result is not equal to OK. So to gather your inv uh, invitees uh, off the list, just grab the data extras and look for extra players. Um, and then you can add that to your turn-based match configuration. I'm, I'm not quite sure. Can you go back? Sure. Um, so I'm sorry. this. Uh... Get string array list extra extra players. What what does this mean? Is this grabbing That's, from the UI that I just dismissed the players I want to invite? Exactly. Gotcha. Okay. Um, and then you create a turn based match config using a builder, add the, that list of invitees, and then uh, call create turn based match. Gotcha. Um, it's a little bit more complicated if you want to use auto matching, which uh, we absolutely recommend you try. Um, that is still important. Yes. Some um, players might not have friends. So uh, as you saw, when we were, when we were uh, showing the demo, there's uh, always add auto pick player. And anybody can choose that. And then in that case, you'll get a, a minimum and maximum number of auto match players. Um, this is a lot like our real-time multiplayer code in terms of managing auto match players. So um, you can look at that as a reference as well. But basically, grab the min and max numbers and create a uh, auto match criteria object and pass that to the builder for the, the turn based match. So I know um, in real time we are encouraging developers to you know also kind of have a quick match button that sets up auto matching without going to that UI. Mm -hmm. um, is that what this code does? Uh, this code actually uh, will grab the information from the invitation screen. Gotcha. So when you pop in the invitation screen, you have an auto match button thing. If you want to skip that and you just want to have an auto match button, all you have to do is follow the second step there where it says uh, if, uh, if min auto match players is greater than zero. Just say auto match criteria, create auto match criteria, number of auto match slots you want. It might be one in the case of 8 bit artist. Gotcha. OK. Um, after that, pass set auto match criteria for your turn based match config, and then call create turn based match. Now, Automa the way we're doing auto match, uh, I think, is really neat. We're doing what's called rolling auto match, where you can start a game, take your first turn, and pass it on to somebody else. So let's make that concrete here. Um, so uh, let's say I'm player one. I, I've decided I want to play against an auto match player. What happens is I take my first turn. Mm -hmm. uh, so if I were playing a bit artist, I draw my first picture, and I hit send. But at this point, the system doesn't know who I'm playing against. It has no idea. It just knows you're going to play against an auto match player. Okay. And at that point, it sort of goes up into the cloud and waits around to be auto match. Now, say Todd's playing. Todd wants to play, and he hits, I want to play against an auto match person. At that point, um, the system actually knows, well, OK, there's this open auto match slot. So let's just put those guys together and <laughs> make, have them play each other. So when Todd gets his game, I will have already taken my turn. And you'll be able to guess and then draw your own. Um, so rolling auto match gets people going in the game right away, even in situations uh, uh, in situations where the, you, your game sort of rules support that. 
So what, uh, the, the advantage here is basically we don't have to kind of take that additional step of like, I'm looking for someone to play. Oh, Wolf has decided exactly. he's going to play with me. Okay, now I take my turn. It basically mm -hmm. kind of gets me right into the game a lot faster. Yeah, I mean, if, you, if your game supports people taking their turns before they know who they're playing against, you should totally use rolling auto matching. It's very neat. That sounds good. Um, no matter how your turn starts, uh, you're going to get a, uh, or your game starts, you're going to get a turn-based match-initiated callback from the game's client. You can register a listener. Um, as with all these callbacks, you should check that your status codes are right. Um, sometimes things go wrong, like network errors. Every callback uh, comes with status codes, and you should use them. We have sample code showing how to interpret them. Um, yeah, you may already have a game going, so when the game gets started, you should actually look to see if your match data is not null. If your match data is null, uh, it means, hey, you just got a fresh game and you should take the first turn, and you should call whatever your turn, your game initialization steps are. Um, but you might have one of these rolling auto match games, at which point you're like, oh, we're already playing. Never mind, just go straight to the turn taking interface. Cool. So that's what this, this code is demonstrating. So speaking of taking turns, um, let's talk about uh, actually taking, uh, playing games. Yeah, for us, playing games is taking turns. When you're playing a game, uh, you'll be passing around this match data. So what's inside the match data? First, you just get uh, game data, which is a, uh, a byte array. It's 128K. Uh, it's whatever you want. It's opaque to us. We don't even know. Um, whatever you store here gets propagated to everybody on all of their signed in devices. So if I'm multiply signed in, I'm going to get, that's going to get sent out to everything. Uh, you also get a list of participants. Each comes with a unique uh, participant ID. For games that have not finished auto-matching, you'll only get the current participants, and then you'll get a number of unused auto-match slots. Uh, lastly, you're going to get some status bits on the, on the uh, game itself. There's turn and match status bits. Um, uh, uh, status bits like, is it my turn, and is this game over? Are we auto-matching? What's going on? So uh, and. Even when you're not taking, even when it's not your turn, you'll mm -hmm. still get these updates every time somebody takes their turn, so uh, people can monitor their game as it's going by. Uh, so we're playing a four-player game. I'm player one. Mm -hmm. I pass my state data, my game state data, player two. Player two takes a turn. I will still get a notification of hey. You will get a notification, oh, sorry. but your data will get updated. Ah, so and when you open and check, you'll say, oh yeah, look, player two took his turn. Cool. Okay, so I can see player two's turn. I will see somewhere in the in the uh, turn status that it's still not my turn, mm -hmm. the match status that the game's still going on. Exactly. OK. Um, um, speaking of participants, you should this should feel pretty familiar if you've used real-time multiplayer. A participant comes with a uh, participant ID and a display name. Um, and if they weren't auto-matched, then they come with a person data structure, which has a way you can uh, get their profile picture uh, and things like that. Um, so actually playing a game is create some kind of shared state and then call take turn uh, with somebody else's participant ID. So uh, if I'm, you know, if I finish drawing, I'm going to say take turn and uh, put uh, your participant ID, not your person ID, participant ID. Um, if you want to pass it off to auto matching, you just pass null in and it'll go off to the cloud, and, and assuming that you have auto match slots left. Um, and lastly, uh, this gets to turn order. Um, turn order is entirely client dependent. Each time you take a turn, uh, the client decides who's going to go next. Um, round robin is an, a logical choice, and, but it's up to your game to decide. And as we were talking about earlier, sometimes you're going to call yourself as the next player. And that's OK. And what that'll do is sort of checkpoint the data and uh, have that uploaded to the cloud. Okay. Um, uh, here's the code, uh, as we were talking about, for taking turns. So on my, uh, when you click the Done button, um, find out who the next participant is. Uh, increase, I just have a turn counter thing, so I increase the turn counter. Show a spinner, because it's going to take, take some asynchronous process to do this. And then you call take turn with. Uh, your match ID, the data that you want to persist, and uh, whose turn it is next. It's very easy. After that, null out your turn data, because it's going to be invalid at this point. <laughs> um, one last note on uh, uh, turn order. Um, remember, turn order is in any order of your client. Um, you can go round robin. That's really common. But in a game like Bridge, where the uh, winner is who's bidding start, we give you that flexibility. OK, what happens when the game is finished? 
um, when the game over, uh, when a game is over, like you know, I've made my last move in in a, like a risk-like game, then I'm going to call finish turn-based match. Once this happened, you can't continue modifying the uh, state. Um, each player gets an alert immediately that says they can uh, uh, they can all look and see what the final state was, and then they call finish themselves. And finally, after everybody calls finish themselves, uh, the game moves to a complete state where everyone has called finish. Next, you can leave. Leaving is uh, akin to just getting up and walking out. <laughs> That's saying, I no longer want to participate, but the game can continue going on. So if we're all playing poker and I say, ah, I got to go pick up my kid. <laughs> Get up, walk away. That's leaving. Um, you can leave on your turn, and there's actually a separate call for leaving not on your turn. Once you give up your, your seat, uh, the game keeps going, but no one can take your place. So you can't just have like a continuously rolling game where like you know thousands of people have all joined. Uh, the number of people uh, who join at when auto matches, all the auto match slots are full. That's the last person who can join the game. But any number of people can leave. So this might be useful if there was a um, like an elimination type game, and mm -hmm. I get eliminated from the map, and I'm like, well, I guess I don't want to participate in this game anymore because I'm out. Or the I game may play. just automatic. The client may automatically call leave for gotcha. you because you're not going to make any more moves, and we no longer want to pass you any. Uh, we don't want to pass you uh, the turn. Gotcha. Um, if you cancel a game, it just spontaneously ceases to be. Uh, we don't recommend calling cancel unless you're doing uh, debugging or administration kills. Uh, this is like a marriage annulment. It's just the game never was. <laughs> it ceased to happen. Hmm. Um, Lastly is expiration. Um, people do drop out of games. It's very sad. Uh, we have a built-in expiration that happens uh, uh, after two weeks. If no, somebody just doesn't take their turn for two weeks, it just ends. Um, if auto match does not find a taker within 24 hours, it also expires. Um, and if a game expires, it can never come back. It's over. Okay. So take your turn at least once every two weeks. Yes, exactly. You got to figure if you're waiting that long, it's probably not very. So I have a Q&A section where I've I've given you some cues so you won't stump me. Oh. Here you go. All right. Say Wolf, what happens if most of my gameplay is server side? Actually, this is a very common case. Like yeah. we've seen a lot of a lot of game developers that already kind of run most of their logic on the server. Um, you know, because they want to make sure it's it's fair and they don't always trust the clients and that sort of thing. So can I still take advantage of, of this stuff? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, at this point, the player matching is going to be really valuable to you. And also the notification system is going to be pretty valuable to you because it's going to be integrated into the rest of their sort of play games experience. Um, you, we will, and we can also do rolling auto, auto match for you. So at that point, the turn that you're passing back and forth to each other is probably just the ID of the turn on your server. Gotcha. Okay. And, and then the game has to sync to the to you'll have to do all of your own syncing basically of the game state, um, and they'll probably have to be connected to the the game to the internet when your game uh, is being played. Makes sense. But Seems yes, like, yeah. absolutely. You sh even if you uh, all of your stuff is happening server side, you should look into this. Clearly, server side a little more of an investment. If maybe I'm a, a small company trying out my game for the first time, maybe mm -hmm. I want to do it client side at first. Then it becomes very successful. Lots of people are playing. I then might sort of shift to a, a more server-side model if that's appropriate. Sure. OK. Or really, you're just an established game that already kind of has some server-side stuff. We have lots of sample code. You're welcome to ask questions uh, to us on Google Plus or Stack Overflow. And uh, drop us a line. Yeah, we'd love to hear from you. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye.